To thee we come, O Lord our God. examination of our conscience. <laughs> Having confessed our sins unto God and asking for his forgiveness, I ask that you please recite with me the second form of the act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. O oh God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we may enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. You sit speaking against your brother, against your mother's son, you spread rumors. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone, the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, 
in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. In the humanity of your divine Son, may we be attentive to him as we move through life, so that we may do your will and remain his brothers and sisters. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. pray, Almighty and Eternal Father, the source of life, we humbly pray this day for the repose of the souls of your children, Jan Adamski and Helen Kislowski, who has passed before us. Receive them into your care and bless them with your everlasting love. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading for this morning is taken from the book of Genesis. After the man Adam had eaten of the tree, the Lord called to the man and asked him, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. Then he asked, Who told you that you were naked? You had eaten them from the tree, which I had given you to eat. The man replied, The woman who you put here with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree, and so I ate it. The Lord God then asked the woman, Why did you do such a thing? The woman answered, The serpent tricked me into it, so I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you shall be banned from all the animals and from all the wild creatures. On your belly shall you crawl, and dirt shall you eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will strike at your head while you strike at his heel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response for the responsorial psalm is with the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Out of the depths of cry to you, O Lord God, <clears throat> hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. With the Lord there is mercy and the fullness of redemption. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand, but with you in forgiveness that you may be revered. With the Lord there is mercy and the fullness of redemption. I trust in the Lord. My soul trusts in his word. More than sentinels wait for the draw. God, rather. Let Israel wait for the Lord. The Lord is mercy and the fullness of redemption. For with the Lord is kindness, and with him is permanent redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. With the Lord there is mercy and the fullness of redemption. The second reading is from the second letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed, therefore I spoke. We too believe, and therefore we speak, knowing that there is one who raised the Lord Jesus, who raised us also with Jesus, and placed us with you in his presence. Everything indeed is for you, so that the grace bestowed in abundance on more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow for the glory of God. Therefore, we are not discouraged. Rather, although our <clears throat> outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this momentary light affliction is producing for us 
an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to what is seen, but what is unseen, for what is seen is transitory, and what is unseen is eternal. For we know that if our earthly dwelling, a tent, should be destroyed, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Many have fallen by the edge of the sword, but not as many as by the tongue. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. A prophet is not without honor, except in his native place and among his own kin and his own house. Cleanse my heart and my lips, almighty God, as you cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal. In your mercy, cleanse me so that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Mark. Jesus came home with his disciples. Again, the crowd gathered making it impossible for them even to eat. When his relatives heard of this, they set out to seize him, for they said he is out of his mind. The scribes who had come from Jerusalem said, he is possessed by Beelzebub, and by the prince of demons he drives out demons. Summoning them, he began to speak the, to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. That is the end of him. But no one can enter a strong man's house to plunder his property unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he can plunder the house. Amen, I say to you, all sins and all blasphemies that people utter will be forgiven them. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an everlasting sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. His mother and his brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent word to him and called him. A crowd seated around him told him, your mother and your brothers and your sisters are outside asking for you. But he said to them in reply, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking round at those seated in the circle, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers, for whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Christus. Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking around at those seated in the circle, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers, for whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. Words taken from today's Gospel according to St. Mark. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters, a family of God. The bond of a mother to her newborn child is unlike any other relationship in society. In the animal world, it is not uncommon for a mother to take an orphan and raise it as if it were her own and shares her child with the other mothers as a part of the group, the pride, or the band, and therefore a part of the total family. In our world, adopting a child by someone who are not necessarily their biological parents, raises that child and loves that child if it were their own. Though I grew up with paternal twin sisters, four years younger, I never had a brother. My brothers were the neighborhood kids I grew up with, played baseball and football in the streets, and even built several forts in the woods with them. We were banded as brothers. Think for a moment of the band of brothers in war, which has existed from the very beginning in history, but in our history, from the Revolutionary War, through the American Civil War, the World Wars, Korea, Vietnam, to our present conflicts in Afghanistan, in Syria, and around the world, men spoke about those who fought alongside, those who fought together and protected each other. They call them their brothers, who many say that these brothers were closer than members of their immediate family. Now Jesus being told that his mother and brothers were outside, Jesus questions those seated, who are my mother and my brothers? When I first read the scripture passage in preparation for today, the sentence sounded strange to me in the beginning. Who are my mother? Shouldn't the sentence read, who is my mother? But the use of the word are is plural, meaning many. It is well known that in many Native American tribes, a newborn was fed by many mothers who shared their milk for not only their own, but for newborn children, which, <clears throat> which cemented the mother and especially the a child in the tribe. Another interesting fact in this portion of Holy Scripture, we read, and looking around at those seated in the circle, now, in Jewish tradition, meals and many other important social functions were served in a rectangular design. Synagogues were mostly square or rectangular in form. But in the Gospel of Mark, we hear of those who were seated in a circle. In a circle, there is no distinction of moving up the social ladder, as mentioned in the lesson of the wedding feast, but it was in a circle where everyone was equal, a part of the hub, the center of the will, forming a perfect circle. Jesus Christ, my brothers and sisters, is that hub within that circle that holds everything together and makes his church 
the body of Christ, the Christian community, united as well as being dependent upon the strength and the stability of all those who are a part of that circle, the disciples of Jesus Christ. And so Jesus said, here are my mother and my brothers, for whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The will of God. What is the will of God? Jesus taught us in the Lord's Prayer, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Will is defined as a determination of one having authority or power. Jesus begins this most important prayer with our Father. Did not Jesus in his agony in the garden pray, Father, if at all possible, let this cup pass from me, but not as I will, but as you will. God's will, God's determination. So if we follow the words of our teacher and master, who asks, who are my mother and my brothers? Look around. Everyone you see who are seated today among you are our mothers and our brothers and our sisters. And unlike many families whose mother has become detached from her children, or children who have become detached from their mother, in a true Christian understanding, Christ Jesus is our older brother, the firstborn among many, as St. Paul makes reference, and that binds all of us to his church. Jesus teaches us, as an older brother, how we are to live, love, and forgive. He showed us at his crucifixion the love that he had for all mankind, his family in God. In the last moments before dying on the cross, Jesus speaks in John chapter 19, verse 26, 27. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loves standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. My dear brothers and sisters, in the Church of Christ, we are all called upon to be one family, brought together through his divine presence in the Blessed Sacrament, which our Lord shares with us in memory of him. We have the calling from our Lord to love one another, to forgive one another, to pray for one another, and to help one another. In this, the family of God. Our Lord reminds us, truly, you are my disciples if you have love one for another. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, let the words that Jesus speaks of today take form within your heart. Though there may be differences, though there may be quarrels, as in any family, it is Jesus Christ to whom we must turn and submit. For if we call him Lord and Master, then this is what he is and should be. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat>
begotten, not made, the one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. One's enemies will be those of his own household. our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted by God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray, Lord our God, accept this oblation which we bless in your name. For in receiving we are filled, and in returning we are fulfilled. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The whole Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your whole hearts. We Let us give thanks unto the Lord.
to heal and perform signs and miracles and to reveal your holy glory. Recognizing Jesus as the Lord of all creation, may we unite in him as we obey his word. Therefore, with the angel and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Holy, holy, holy. Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. And all of your present whose faith and devotion are known to you for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others, the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, who live, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family. And so order our days in your peace that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and to make it pleasing to yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ the day before his suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment so sacred, for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you. He blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you shall do these things, do them in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, and a immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offer you, a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we receive the most sacred body and blood of your son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith, and now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace, through the same Christ our Lord, amen. And grant us your sinful servants who hope in the greatness of your mercy, so part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen by whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, almighty God, our Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and then following divine example, we say with confidence.
us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future, and by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, as also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, supported by the help of your mercy. May we be free from sin and secure from all disturbance through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, the Lord Jesus, not be cause for my judgment or condemnation. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and the holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant this who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the heavenly bread, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be Receive the body and the blood of Christ. 
I will nourish you with the heritage of Jacob your father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The Lord be with you. By the power of your love, which comes to us in this sacred meal, teach us to live as you would have us live, so that we may find you in our midst, where it pleases you to dwell. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Trinity and grant that the sacrifice which we, though unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may it be effective for myself and all those for whom I have offered it through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. And let us all serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now and forevermore. Amen. Yet Benjamin Pophilonius is Christus. Wonderful. What a beautiful day. The song. choir sounded great. And Karen, you were strong today. Thank you for leading us. I want to bring to mind that following this morning's Mass, there is going to be a meeting to take place down in the parish hall. Uh, we want to do some updates for the upcoming picnic, uh, chicken barbecue that is going to take place on August 19th. Uh, Mariana Foster wanted to remind everybody that next week you need to bring all your, your yes. gifts and donations so that the baskets can be prepared for our chicken barbecue. I wanted to also today uh, wish Debbie Mashashik a happy birthday. Woo! Debbie, God bless. I wanted to also thank all of our dear friends and parishioners who came on Friday evening for the silent auction. I think we had a good time. I think there was some great fellowship. And you know, I have put in the bulletin, I cannot begin nor to attempt to mention all who made this happen. Look among you. You are all the ones to have made this happen. And it is through your continued support that we will be successful, even when it seems that there's clouds in the sky. As long as we trust and believe in the Lord, and we give a portion of our time and effort then we will always be successful. Uh, I wanted to bring to mind that um, Monday at 7 o'clock, Adult Bible Discussion Group. Saturday, we're going to uh, continue with our work projects. As you probably noticed a couple of weeks ago, there were quite a few trees that were taken down. And so little by little, we're moving forward. And I want to thank all who have helped in making this happen. I also bring to mind next Sunday, the 18th Sunday in the Ordinary Holy Mass uh, of the Eucharist will be held at 9 o'clock. Is there anything that I failed to mention? Yes, sir. Uh, if anyone is interested, I have extra tickets for the chicken barbecue. 
wonderful. And um, again, I want to, to thank those who have, have worked diligently, people like Don Strosky, helping us with the, uh, the uh, businesses, and for Cheryl and for everybody who is giving a portion of their time to make this chicken barbecue successful. I extend um, uh, more or less a request to help us to be able to, um, among our family and friends, drum up the August 19th chicken barbecue. It is through our combined effort that we will make this thing happen. Uh, if there is no other announcements, are there any intentions that you would like to offer as we pray our final prayer? Buddy, our prayers for Kathy uh, to be said at the altar. Yes. For my brother-in-law who's um, fighting brain cancer. We all turn to the Lord because he is the divine healer. He, through our prayers and through our faith, brings forth those who struggle with the difficulties of life. Jesus told us, in the world you will have tribulation, you'll have trials, but be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. If you believe and you put your trust, then things happen. And so now let us offer a final prayer for those who are sick, for those who are celebrating birthdays, for all those that are in need, for all of us and for our parish. May God be with us until we meet again. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty and eternal God, you know our hearts, you know our minds, you know our needs. We come unto you, Holy God, in this most sacred place, asking that you would hear our prayers and help heal the sick and give comfort to those who are in need. We offer the prayer as our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of death. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And for our faithful departed, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.